about an hour south of Florence, you'll find yourself in the heart of Tuscany. Let's check it out. Escaping the bubble in Tuscany. We'll visit San Gimignano, known for its towers and world famous gelato, the small fortified hilltop town of Montereggione, and Siena, known for its beautiful cathedral and the famous horse race, the Palio. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to San Gimignano, uh, Italy. Uh, it's in the heart of Tuscany. It's a medieval hill town. And today we're on a guided tour uh, throughout Tuscany. And this is our first stop. So San Gimignano is known for these towers, which you can see behind us. Uh, back in the day, around 12th and 13th, 14th century, uh, the families in town would build these towers and the tower signified <laughs> their uh, status and wealth. And the taller the tower was, the more uh, status and wealth that they had, <laughs> thanks. And there were 72 original towers and now there's about 14 left. And there's one, two, three, about four of them behind us. And the views from here are amazing. We're on one of the uh, bluffs and you can see uh, just rolling hills and uh, wine country all around us. It has the best gelato in the room. And we're gonna we're gonna go try it. We'll go uh, check it out. And see. Ya. Right, we just arrived in San Giamano and walking down the main street, uh, looking for some coffee, and then gonna get some of the best gelato in the world. Hi everyone, so we're in San Giamano right now and we found out that the most famous and the best gelato place in the world is here. So we're gonna go and test it out and see how it is and report back to you. I'm sure it's fabulous, but you never know. So for three years running, this was voted as the best tasting gelato in the world. It's pretty darn good. Yeah. We got uh, three gelatos for about uh, nine dollars or nine euro, but it's definitely worth the money. And we're right here at Dondoli's in San Gimignano. We're not gonna fly. <laughs> So in Italy, you always have to watch out for uh, traffic because you think you're in a town square, a piazza where no one can drive, and then someone drives right by you. <laughs> so sometimes the sidewalks and roads are one now. And heading back to our tour bus and walking through some of the uh, city walls. There's Montereggioni. One of the smallest medieval towns in Tuscany. What's up everybody? We're outside Montereggiono, one of the small uh, medieval cities in Tuscany. But we're sitting up on top of a hill and surrounding us is the Chianti uh, region of Tuscany. You can see some olive trees right below us here and then off in the distance uh, some of the great uh, fields. But uh, it's a cool little castle and we're going to go explore it now. Alright, we are in the center of uh, Montereggioni, an old uh, medieval town up on the hills in Tuscany. It's uh, surrounded and fortified by these old uh, castle walls and it was basically one of the smallest uh, cities or towns in all of Tuscany over all the years because there's been less than 100 people uh, and their total population. And it's noon, there go the bells. So 
so we walked by these guys and it looks like a community project. They were collecting all the olives from the olive tree and kind of just chilling out. Then I saw this little garden entrance and it actually led to the back of the church. And so we're checking it out. We saw a couple of cats and it's kind of vacant back here, but it's really pretty. Yeah, it's a nice quiet little area that we found. All right, we're gonna go explore some more. See ya. All right, Tuscany grapes. I think these are Sangiovese. Which they use to make Chianti. Beautiful day in Tuscany. And our first wine tasting here at the Famiglia Mazzarini. And uh, it was really good. Uh, they specialize in Chianti and uh, actually 20, 20 year old of a salmon and they shipped to the US for about 13 euros a bottle which was amazing. Uh, the balsamic was the most expensive thing we bought which was 41 euro. But uh, we had a great time and now we're going to continue our tour to see <laughs> Siena has a very interesting history. Here we are entering the Piazza del Campo, where every summer, twice, once in July and August, there is a bareback horse race which has been going on since the medieval times. The riders are selected from each of the 17 districts in Siena, and the winner gets bragging rights for the rest of the year. The city of Siena is divided into these 17 districts, and the rivalries and competitiveness amongst everyone that lives in each district is still going on even today. Three laps around the square, and the horse that wins uh, carries the prestige and pride and uh, silk banner award for the year. <laughs> Thanks, Kenzie. <laughs> Cathedral in Siena. Hey everybody, we're in uh, Siena and we just did a tour of the city and learned a lot of facts about it. It's pretty awesome. Right behind us there is part of the Domo and the uh, 13th century cathedral. But uh, we learned all about the districts and the famous uh, horse race which they have twice a year every year except for this year due to covid Ooh, and second. all of the districts oh and they didn't have a race during the uh, world war uh sure. world war ii either and they are competitive and they have colors that match like every district has a color they get married in their colors it's crazy yeah it seems like the most competitive yeah uh, <laughs> city in the world that I've ever heard of. It's like a company has a, like a kind of sports, like two major sports coming together like after seven. But uh, now we're walking around the uh, rest of the city and then we're gonna go check out some shops and explore a little bit. See ya! <laughs> oh yeah, these grapes, look. Delicious. They almost don't look real. <laughs> yes, you silly kids. So we're at this farmer's market, and, and this uh, the seller has laid out all of these fruits that he sells, and he's labeled them so you know what they are. Bellissima Toscana, 
Ciao. We want you to escape the bubble. Like and subscribe. And also, a fun fact. My dad was trying to film this and he pressed the camera button. <laughs> and he was like, hey guys. And I was in the recording. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>